Papa, can you read me a poem from my new storybook? I can't sleep. Sure, son. Here we go. They said I wouldn't make it. Now my chicken's naked and my truck is lifted. What the f***? You've already seen this in the thumbnail, but I wanna make sure I'm super clear that I'm not talking about musicians who put stuff on YouTube. Stuff like this, this, and this are all great ways that musicians can express themselves and be more creative, and I'm, of course, super down for that. But what I am talking about are these wonder gems here. But I can get more Who the hell loves the venue? Being dressed to meet my friends, but I don't know what to wear. This isn't only gonna be like a roast video, which I promise I'm going to roast the music, but it's about three main points within a larger discussion of the role that music plays as a consumed piece of content in the digital age. And to be fair, I wanna say I'd probably do the same thing if I was in the position as one of these massive creators. These people already have huge followings, so it makes sense and it's just good business that they're trying to expand their media in different mediums and platforms, so it keeps them immune to any different algorithm or status change. I think it's important we take a historic look at the internet and look at the point when negative viral online content became the means to a career. And of course, look no further than Rebecca Black, the Christopher Columbus of terrible viral content for music careers. Based on my average viewer's age, it's safe to say that you probably know who she is, but if you don't, here's a quick snippet of her legacy. It's And as far as I know, this is one of the first examples of somebody outputting a product that was pretty bad and very poorly done that turned into a full-blown career. I also wanna take a moment and just kinda of say that I do not regard this song and video as like a piece of art from the depths of her soul. Her family openly admits that they paid people to make the song and make the video for her and that she just came in to sing the vocals and be in the video. So you almost can't even blame her. But I also understand that she was 13 and the target demographic for this song was probably like six to 12. When it comes to the internet, I feel like people forget that these are still young kids. And of course, they're gonna make content that probably only appeals to young kids. So it's an important perspective to have because I think we look at it all as a joke, but I honestly think that this was a serious attempt to make a song geared towards kids about like the weekend being fun and it just became the laughing stock of the internet. No matter what you think of the song, it worked. After a month of it being out, it absolutely exploded and now she has a career in music and entertainment. Everyone wrote her off as just having her 15 minutes, but she's taken that and turned it into 1.4 million subscribers on YouTube, 170,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, and a well-nurtured big community of people around her over the last eight years. And with this marks a new era, an era of making music for press, outrage, and attention instead of expressing yourself. Welcome to the era I call, yikes, what the f is going on? Please make it stop, it hurts. Number one is an absolute lack of effort. These people have so many resources available to them and undoubtedly have enough of a budget to put at least a mediocre team together, but they don't seem to ever put in the effort to actually make it good. And keep in mind, I'm not talking about parody videos like this. This is my bro and he's a magician. This is his wife and he's a his children. This is my bro and this is my sister. This is my family. where it's obviously very tongue in cheek and it's more like a cute, fun thing to do, I'm talking about songs like this. We were about nothing. Me and my girl stay jumping, harmonizing together. Holy shit, I didn't know they could take seagulls vomiting and turn it into a pop song. I just, oh my God, I, uh, I, need, I need to go lie down. I'm, I think I just lost four years off my life. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, that's something. Before I dive into it, I think it's important to kind of realize and look at that we can never really tell if this was intentionally made with the purpose of being bad. Like to make a bad song because it'll get shares, it'll get talked about, tons of react videos, or if it was just poorly done. But more than that, as with Rebecca Black, I can't point my finger at Danielle and blame her for this because she's a child. I think it's also foolish to think that a massive following and a massive business that is Danielle is gonna just be run by her. It's very possible that she had even very little or no say in how the song went, how the video looked, the same way that an actor might be hired on a film that they're not a super fan of, but they know that it's gonna be a paycheck, it's gonna be money, and that can influence their decisions. So don't jump to just blame the person that's the face of it, because you never know if they may not even like the content themselves. Because that, you know, like they're not gonna admit it. They're not gonna say, yeah, this video that I just promoted, yeah, I didn't like it, but you know. It worked, got the attention. There's a team of people that went into making that dumpster fire, and they are all equally to blame for it. Okay, this song. The production is 
very meh. I mean, it's got some interesting parts, it's got some catchy melodies, but overall I feel like it's a bit stagnant and I just feel like they could have put a little more money in to get a better producer to really make the song fantastic instrumentally. But of course, the vocal. Oh my God, that vocal. But the thing is, is that's okay because I don't expect Danielle to be a fantastic singer. I'm not gonna blame her for that. It's also important to remember that she was 12 when this happened. Like you can't blame a 12 year old for not being a great singer. I certainly wasn't, you certainly weren't, that's fine. But as a full-time music producer and mixing engineer, I can definitely say that I've had a vast array of singers, everybody that's super great to people who are maybe newer, less experienced, and maybe aren't that great at keeping super solid pitch. But as my job, I'll make sure that when they're here, I'll try to encourage them, give them tips and technique things to help them get there. And then if I need to, I will tune the rest and get it in place so it sounds good. Because at the end of the day, it's about having the best sounding product and if we're using technology to help some of that, I don't see anything wrong with that, especially if the alternative is a vocal sounding like this. Jumping, harmonizing together. The thing is, is it couldn't really be a money thing because I can get people to do editing and tuning of those vocals for like $30, $40. So there's no excuse, especially with all the resources that they have for this kind of stuff. It should at least be like in pitch. And this brings me to my second point, which is two, being bad seems to be better. Diving into this, I think it's important to not just look at like lack of talent, but look at the incentives that creators have for being bad and outrageous. The music business at its core has always been about entertaining. Through the performance of your music in recordings, your live shows and interviews that you would do, all of this comes together to make the brand entity and music has always been a portion of that, even if it used to be more of the focus in the past. Bringing that into the social media age where you can go viral and the attention seems to be more important than the quality of the attention, there's really no incentive for a YouTube vlogger or YouTube creator to put all this time into a piece of art when they can just fart out a low quality song and get a bunch of attention. And within this point, I feel like I can already tell people are typing out the really aggressive hate for any kind of electronic hip hop music, but I need to be super, super clear. My distaste for this kind of music or this like YouTube music hip hop genre that's coming out has nothing to do with the fact that it's hip hop, rap, or electronic based. My hate for Ohio Fried Chicken isn't the fact that it's like a hip hop song, it's wonderful lyrical depth like this. Can I have one more story before I go to sleep? Sure. Yay! Kentucky can't compete. OFC, yee yeet. Sweep you off your feet. Please look up to me. We'll tell you what to do. Tender's the move. Get yourself some sauce. Yeah, you a boss. And while I know that they understand that they're kind of farting out these low quality songs for the sake of the views and the attention because it works, they're in a very influential position with their followings. These channels all seem to be geared towards very young children. And I truly think that a large portion of their audience doesn't understand that it's kind of like not supposed to be taken seriously, that it's a joke and they're just kind of putting out these songs. I think kids are perceiving this as like, this is what music is. Because they grew up with all these large creators and that's their world. And then when they see them put out music, their perception is, oh, this is, music, like this is the stuff I should be into. And so I think that line between like parody creation, maybe putting out stuff to be tongue in cheek or just kind of trashy and get the views is getting lost with this really young audience. And you know what? Yeah, there's a part of me that gets sad thinking that there's just a bunch of kids who are maybe gonna be growing up with music playing this role of kind of being a shocking attention grabbing thing for the sake of grabbing attention and shock and not really having the same emotional place that it's had in my upbringing and I think everybody else's upbringing. I think a great example of YouTuber gone parody musician that's super self-aware is Danny Gonzalez. Check out this chorus. It's a very well produced and composed track with strong melody, but he's just singing about a parody satire topic. You can tell that Danny Gonzalez also put a lot of effort into the visual aspect of it, telling an actual story with a ton of interesting, well produced and high quality shots like this, this, and this, which is a hundred, if not a thousand times better than the shots in Danielle's video, where you have this shot of little boys going on their hoverboards in a cloudy day in Venice. And then you cut to this super yellow shot of the same street. Like what, that's, it's just, again, so, so lazily done. More than anything, it's the fact that it just works. Because if you're a daily vlogger, you're probably not gonna get more than one or two views out of a single person for something like that. 
but with the song, you can capture them for months at a time or even a year with one piece of content. This allows a large YouTuber to play even more of a role in that person's day-to-day -day life and can add more impressions and kind of keep them in their creator's verse. It's the same reason somebody like Gary Vee is getting into serial and wall art. It's all different ways to establish your brand and your personal name all over somebody's life in a bunch of different ways. And as I said, diversifying away from just being a YouTube vlogger and putting out music is a great way to make yourself more immune in case there is that scary algorithm change or the format of the platform changes and all of a sudden your following's in half on that one platform. But I think it's important to circle back to the principles I live and die by the free market. As with money, attention is finite and every creator, including myself, has to fight hard to get it. So while I may have personal beefs with what these large creators are doing and what they're doing to capture this attention, I can't be totally against it. It's the same principles that I use to capture clients from mixing and music production and the same thing that I'm doing here on YouTube to grow my platform. But make no mistake about it, the music is still horrendous, lazily done, and just a very, very cheap cash grab. In my opinion, it's just exploiting their reach as a way to fart out low quality content for views and numbers. When looking at this, I think it's important to take away the methods, not the end result. These creators are masters at capturing attention, and that seems to be the currency of today's market. So I think it would be just kind of a bad idea for us to throw out the tactics just because we don't like the end result that they put out with it. If you made it this far, then I did my job right. I captured your attention, but not by farting out a low quality product. I'm still using the same tactics that they do to hook you in and keep you watching the video, but I'm doing so while being both entertaining and educational. So in the end, you walk away being a more informed and business savvy individual. So now I'm curious, what's your least favorite song that you've seen a YouTuber just fart out for the sake of getting cash? Let me know in the comments. Yo, you made it to the end of the video. That's super cool. You got a bunch of other videos popping up here, but you're not gonna watch them yet. You're gonna make sure that you're subscribed and you've liked the video. You've turned on the bell because this is so much information. I captured your attention. I won the battle. You're here. Let's hang out every single Thursday. This happens all the time. Let's just be friends. I love you so much. All right, bye.